Hey everybody, it's Allie. I'm coming to you live from my bathroom again because there's great lighting and I'm getting ready to take a shower. There is a little bit of an update when it comes to trisepatide and what these compounding pharmacies are doing to try to stay ahead of Eli Lilly and the FDA. So I wanted to go ahead and update you so that it doesn't come as a surprise to you um, if your compounding pharmacy starts to do this as well. So let's just jump right into it. So Mochi has announced that they are going to be adjusting everyone's dosages, right? So what does this mean? Well, it means that they're going to be doing non-standard doses. So for example, if you're on trisepatide, instead of doing 2.5, you might do 1.5. You might do one. Instead of doing five after 2.5, you may do three, right? Instead of being on 10, like I am now, I might be on nine or 9.5 right? So what they're doing is they're utilizing all of this information that we have regarding microdosing and all of the information that has come out about how 30 to 35 percent of people who start a GLP-1 medication end up dropping off by the three-month mark because of extreme side effects. I think they're going to use that as their strategy to differentiate themselves from Eli Lilly, right, and other pharmaceutical companies when it comes to, you know, compounding being allowed. I think that they're putting up the good fight, right? And I think that there's something to be said for microdosing, adjusted dosing, and having it be tailored to the patient. I know that if it was given to me as an option, I 100% would have taken it. Not that I've ever had any terrible side effects, but simply because the longer you are on a dose, right, you reach a point where it's no longer working, meaning that you're no longer losing weight. So for example, for individuals who are, say, 300 pounds and up, this could be the mechanism by which they can slowly titrate up and lose the maximum amount of weight that they could possibly lose, assuming that they are a responder to the medication, right? Because essentially what's happening now is there are insurance companies running rampant, forcing people to go up in dose, either from the 0.5 doses when it comes to trisepatide, or they can only do one month at any particular dose and then they have to titrate up. And then once they reach a certain point, then they're allowed to have multiple boxes of that dose, right? All of these arbitrary rules that not only force people into a situation where they may be titrating up too quickly when it comes to their overall weight loss goals, but also forcing them into a situation where they may encounter stronger side effects for no reason. There is literally no reason. When we have all of this data, when we have all of this information, if there is an opportunity for somebody to lose weight and live a healthier life and get off of other medications for other comorbidities, why do you think it is that 30 to 35% of people are quitting by the time they reach month three? jumping through all the hoops of insurance companies, prior authorizations, prior authorizations being taken away, prior authorizations being bumped out. Now it's prior authorizations, but oh, even though you're, you've already started your GLP-1 journey, yeah, we're going to arbitrarily decide that you have to use this um, special scale and this specific company 
and you have to document everything you're doing. Oh, and you have to try like three or four other medications before we'll allow you to stay on that medication. Like, at what point do we get smart about this? And by we, I mean insurance companies, pharmaceutical companies, PBMs, right? Like, you can't say, oh, well, we need to force people up because a lot of people are quitting and then turn around and complain that people are quitting because the side effects are too intense when we all know it's just because you don't want to cover the medication because it's expensive. This, these issues are not going to be issues five, 10 years from now. It will be, you know, the patents will be up, right? Like, the prices will be much more reasonable. Other drugs will hit the market, which will then create competition, right? But right now, we're in the thick of it. And I think these compounding pharmacies are, and these um, telehealth companies are, are really trying to play this smart. And I give them kudos. So if you receive a message from your telehealth company and they tell you, hey, don't be alarmed, your dose might be slightly smaller or lower than it used to be, then don't panic, right? We, we have a lot of data that shows that doing these off-standard dosings work just fine. And for many people, they actually work better. So I think that it's important to keep in mind what I've said before. And if you haven't watched my video regarding, um, you know, pharmaceutical trials and what all the requirements are and why they are fast tracked the way that they are, definitely go watch that video because I go in depth in that one. But in summary, to say that a pharmaceutical company cannot possibly research every single outcome to get a prescription to market, right? Like they have to do things strategically. So what do they do? They do, you know, a study, they make sure they've got plenty of people and they say, okay, what is the fastest that we can titrate people through? And then they make adjustments as they go. And who knows, maybe Eli Lilly will end up offering either the vials for microdosing or they'll offer off standard dosing, you know, depending on, on how they want to do that. Um, who knows? Maybe they will. Maybe they won't because they don't have to and you know compounding pharmacies will kind of step in where that's involved and i really hope that's the case because side effects shouldn't be something that holds you back when we have an option that could potentially alleviate it now for some people they're just going to have adverse side effects and there's nothing they can do about it right um, they're either extremely sensitive or doesn't agree with their system. But I think that that's a very small group of people. I think that many of the people who drop off of GLP-1s, I personally believe it's a dosing issue, it's a support issue, and it's a primary care doctor support team issue or possibly related to you know, the frustration of dealing with insurance and all of those things can be corrected. It's just a matter of time. So I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe. I'd love to have you along for the ride. And if you are looking for a positive only support group, I've got you covered. Link is in the description box below. And as always, be kind, rewind.